entire collection of Shakespeare and works of art from Moliere to philosophy. I had had an interest in, uh, through martial arts, I had an interest in uh, Eastern mysticism and studied things like the Bhagavad Gita and, uh, and finally into the, you know, whatever was available on Zen Buddhism. And, uh, and I had, again, re revisited uh, the New Testament uh, a number of times. And again, I, I wasn't disparaging any of that. I, I always respected it. But uh, what happened is I finally said, okay, I was surrounded by a lot of, uh, I had remarried, and my second wife uh, was, a, a, was Jewish, but she was not religious, as it stands to reason. Had she been religious, she wouldn't have married me. And I was surrounded by um, Jews that were um, sort of semi-knowledgeable at that point through the, her extended family about the Torah. And uh, I considered myself, I'm not suggesting that makes me one, but I considered myself a scholar. So I, I, um, I, I simply uh, took it upon myself the discipline of rereading uh, the 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 Bible, as we call it, uh, because I was annoyed enough. I had enough knowledge to know that they were getting certain things wrong, and uh, I wanted Who's to be uh, the the Jewish uh, semi-religious Jews around me, and I wanted to be the one who had just read the book lately and could tell them, no, it goes like this, not like that. And uh, I didn't have it wasn't purely motivated to direct at them. I actually had an, an interest. I again, I would mention I was reading tremendously fast and. And finally, everything was uh, seeming like a comic book, like a, not not a, an interesting adult comic book, but like an Archie comic or, or something. If you remember those, vaguely, yeah. vaguely, uh, something very thin for very young children and just not substantive enough. So I find this is fine. Let me just read the Bible, and I'll be one of those people who says, "Yeah, I've read the whole thing, start to, you know, beginning to end, sequentially, you know, starting with Genesis and going right through the New Testament." including all the prophets in, in between. And uh, I got through the second book of Kings in the King James Version without Jewish commentary and was completely convinced that this is beyond the works of man. Having been somebody who was much better educated than most people about what Western civilization and even Eastern civilization is, nothing could compare in terms of a body of work uh, to to that. In other words, I, I could only say, this is really from God. At that point in life, I was introduced, uh, I was taken, my wife started to become uh, religious and started taking me to lectures. And uh, and this was completely, uh, you know, uh, concurrent, if you will. Not we, um, She was vaguely aware that I was reading uh, the King James Bible, and I was vaguely aware that she started doing some of those arcane Jewish practices, you know, having to do with preparation for Shabbat and things like that, which had never been observed in our life before. And um, so uh, she took me to a lecture, and I heard a rabbi uh, speaking of uh, the Sefer Yetzirah and how Avraham, uh, the patriarch, had written over 450 books. And uh, I said, wait a minute, uh, there's no mention in the Bible of Abraham the Patriarch having written any books. And, uh, and so I would uh, question it, and, uh, and, and rabbis became clear. They said, oh, I understand, you don't know what the Jewish Midrash is. And I said, no. And by the way, these are which, which type of rabbis? Are you well, about just here? rabbis that I, you know, I, I, I reform, I, conservative, orthodox. No, this was uh, uh, at this point. I think it was the Kabbalah Center that was the oh, first the one Kabbalah I was, Center. Yeah, I was okay. exposed to that, but I, I did come across, you know, through uh, the minimum uh, rituals that were observed. I, all of them. I, I, I became. Uh, they became aware that I knew a lot of the written text of the five books of Moses, but that I did not know any Jewish explanation. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, I didn't take their word for it. I went to a bookstore on Fairfax, and I, I said, do you have anything called the Sefer? I'd written it down phonetically, Sefer Yetzirah. Um, and uh, and the, 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 uh, the guy working the store just said, oh, yeah, we got that. He pointed, there's a whole wall of, you know, right there. So 
it, it, one organization, that bookstore, had no affiliation with you know the, the Kabbalah Center or anything else. And I said, oh, but this is okay. Uh, it's easily verifiable that you know who's talking about what and what is the the common uh, that there is a universally agreed upon substance a body of work called the Torah, and that it's completely known amongst Orthodox Jews and almost completely unknown outside of that sphere. In any case, I became, I was said, well, I've, I've gotten through the second book of Kings so far, and I told you I'd concluded that without Jews, that certainly this is all from God. It's not, this is not normal. It, it doesn't have the substance and feel. Uh, interestingly, if I play a game with my children, I, I'm blessed with younger children as well, and it will call real and not real. This is basically, you know, what's, what's made by God, what's made by man. Right. And they never get it wrong, and, and it's it's marvelous to see this. So you can point to a mountain uh, made by God, a tree made by God, the ocean made by God, the sky made by God, a car made by man, an airplane made by man. You know, there's not they're not going to get any. Uh, there is a a uh, identifiable characteristic of that which is made by man that is just self-evident. Anybody who couldn't identify it would be a fool. There's a marvelous story by Rabbi Ibn Pakoda in his book called Duties of the Heart, and it's just the introduction to his book, and he talks of, of a man walking with a friend in the woods, and they come across a miller's hut, you know, with a water wheel, and right, turns, right. and it's, it's very beautiful in, in, uh, in its way, and the man uh, walking with his friend says, Boy, that's a beautiful hut, I wonder who made it? And the friend says, oh, uh, nobody made it, it made itself. And the guy said, what? He says, well, it made itself. Certain things are just make themselves. That, and, and leaving that point to itself, he digresses and said, now, where would you stand with that friend from this point for, forward? You'd have to realize that a person who could consider that something obviously made by man uh, made itself is, at the very best, a fool. Right. And they, you couldn't retain them as a friend. You may be polite to them and be kind to them or whatever, but you're not going to have them close to you. Um, because uh, for the same reasons that one wouldn't have uh, the rather charming character of Inspector Clouseau, played by Peter Sellers, you wouldn't bring him into your house if you could avoid it because he'd break up the place, you know, the cool, uh, pool cue shtick and things like right. that. Just breaking these. He doesn't have to be mean. He can be destructive. Uh, because he's an idiot, you know, and we find that funny. But it's absurd that we would actually do that in our lives with, with people, but people, in fact, in the interest of not being judgmental, uh, do that very thing. And there is much destruction that comes of it. In any case, uh, I, I've won the back to your point. story, yeah, yeah, yeah back to your story. Did. Okay, so you're, yeah. you're at a bookstore, you've been going to lectures at the Kabbalah Center, you pick up Sefer Yetzirah, Okay, take me yeah. on your Jewish journey from there. No, from that point, I, I then became aware that there were uh, focused uh, books to, uh, you know, uh, put one's mind and introduce one to the uh, Midrash, uh, uh, which is, for those who don't know, this is the the oral Torah, they say in Hebrew, Torah Baal Peh, which means uh, it, it's the, um, you might look at it as the, um, one way of describing it would be that uh, the written narrative is like a mnemonic, which is to trigger other pieces of information that is presumed that we have. And this is much of what the Jews studied uh, over the years when they make uh, what such an, uh, a mysterious big de deal about Torah study. What is the substance of that information? And it is essentially what God learned, uh, what God shared with Moses on, on Mount Sinai. And it has been preserved essentially as the Talmud. Okay, tell me about yeah. your story. No, but that I, I know I'm not lecturing the audience. I'm just for the right. purpose of elementary uh, discussion. So, uh, with uh, with that in mind, I became aware that there was such a thing, and and because I had this strong base in knowing what was in the written word of the Torah, when I put it together, it opened up literally uh, uh, worlds and. and countless worlds, if you will, and enough for it to become self-evident to me that uh, this is all true. When did you move on from the Kabbalah Center to other 
Mm, probably about uh, a 